me tell you Keeping it real Keeping it real Yay, we have a very special guest right now. This is Heather from Hi. HAI. And would you like to explain what HAI is before we get sure. into other things? Sure. So HAI, uh, we are Healing Arts Initiative. We were founded as Hospital Audiences, Inc. in 1969, so some people may know us as that. Uh, we are an art service nonprofit, so we provide access to the arts for anybody in a marginalized community, which are many people in New York City. Um, so people in mental health facilities, nursing homes, public school kids, homeless shelters, really anybody who couldn't just pick up and go see a show or go to an art gallery or anything like that. We bring people to the arts, so we provide tickets. Um, we have a, a bus that is able to accommodate nine uh, people in wheelchairs and ten additional ambulatory passengers. Wow. And then we also bring performances and art workshops into facilities. I went today. Yeah. As, as we had yeah. the JI artist yeah. uh, sitting right next to me. So I, we do both performances and uh, an art workshop so people can, can it's learn. It's amazing. And, it, and it, how long have you been there? I have been there since mm -hmm. July of 2014. Okay. Mm -hmm. So long enough to yeah, know sure. that, that it's something you enjoy. Absolutely. And actually, I worked at a theater, and HAI was my client beforehand. Ah. So I have been very familiar with HAI nice. even before I started working there. Wow. So, um, yeah, I'm so grateful that I am with you. I mean, now I've been going every Wednesday morning to a little place in Brooklyn. Oh, my gosh. It's just, you have no idea what it's like playing for this clientele. Is it? An, it's a, a workshop. ARC. It's oh, a workshop. ARC, yeah. yeah. Do you know it? I certainly do. Yeah. yeah. It's it's crazy. It's so fun, but it's, like, challenging. Sure. It is, but it's really rewarding. And I know meeting other artists, at HAI, everyone feels the same way, that it's so rewarding to play and have the ability to do stuff like this. Well, you're going to have to actually want to do it and want to reach out to these audiences because, like you said, it's not easy. It's and not. not everybody is comfortable, which is so silly, right? Because people are people. People are people. We're all the same. Everybody deserves the right to sit and listen to somebody play the guitar. And, yeah. and it's upsetting that people can, you know, go their entire lives and not experience live art in any way. Yeah, live music is definitely something that is not... You can't match it. I mean, you're a live musician. Well, I think I'm alive. Yeah. <laughs> Last time I checked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's I, an I, amazing I, singer. Yeah, and, and that was good. He's like Robin Williams. Do you have comedians? We have any type of art form. So we have comedians, puppeteers, ah. magicians, jugglers, uh, uh, flamenco dancers. Right. Really anything that a facility wants, we will provide. And if we can't provide it right away, then we'll hold auditions for that particular genre to try and get an artist on our roster who can provide it. Wow. So jugglers? We have jugglers. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you have circus dogs? Circus dogs? Like dogs that do tricks and stuff? You can circus bears. Do I? Or elephants. Any, any animal. I, no, because our artists are so hard to contain already. I can't yeah. imagine what it would be like throwing animals. I can't even imagine. I yeah. know. Bring. We can't leave food around the office because people will just come and eat it. That's if true. dogs were there, it would, it be, would be gone. Exactly. Yeah. If I was so, there, I'd be gone. I know. Hey, can I ask you, to, yeah. the artists that come and do that, is this charity work for them? And can they volunteer? And where do they go to volunteer? Well, every artist is paid because we believe that oh. artists deserve the right to Could pay. use a few bucks. Now, too, right? it's not a, a huge amount of money. Yeah, but it's more but it's than we money. get like playing gigs right. at Auto Shrunk and Head, which I it's love. It's probably enough for a beer. Right. It is, it is. Um, we do maintain a certain quality, and I'm sure you fit that criteria. So everybody does need to audition for us. Yeah, I had to audition. I felt like I was in flash dance. Yeah, I was, was a judge. It was so <laughs> scary, but you were there. I was. You, Lily, and, and Patty. Patty. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I was just like... <gasps> But auditions are scary anyway. But, right. But, we're, but it was fun. Easy you, yeah. Crowd. Well, that was. I yeah, picked me. I was yeah. so excited. <laughs> I know. I, I feel honored every time I go out on a gig for That's you guys. Nice. Well, yeah. It's like you know, I want to do good for you. You know, and the clientele, of right. course. Right. But there have been um, ver various places, and they are so different. Even if you go to like one nursing home and then another assisted living, like. It's just totally different. Well, also now with nursing homes, we find that some of their clients are, you know, in their late 60s, which means that their 
era of music is rock and roll, the Beatles, very right. happy things, you know. I can't imagine somebody like that in my parenting being in a nursing home. Right. You have to realize that everybody is going to be different. Everybody's going to want to enjoy a different type of music. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we have to be able to provide that. And, yeah. and artists, I think, also have to be flexible with, oh, I was going to sing Sinatra, but yeah. maybe I'll just do a little well, I have this one thing. guy. Yeah, but you, you, should, go. you should go. No, go. No, no. Oh, go, what? Oh, go, okay. go, go. I wasn't going to say anything. This one guy, though, that I see almost every Wednesday now, he's always like, James Brown, James Brown. That's what I was going to say. And then I, like, bring James Brown, he's like, Commodores, Commodores. <laughs> and then as soon as I finish Commodores, he's like, Sherelle, Sherelle. I'm like, come on. <laughs> Sherelle, there you go. I know. I, I, and every week I bring my He wants you to play these songs. I play Brick House. I play, like, uh... Uh, she's a very kinky girl. I know, like, <laughs> whatever they want. Yeah, it's so much fun. It like challenges you. You have to go she's learn there. She's super their... freaky. Yeah, wow. it's it's true. Like it's it's so much fun though. Like my repertoire is growing. That's awesome. Exactly. You should, you should do gangster rap too. Can you do a gangster rap? I'll bring you for that. Fuck the police. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, you'd be surprised. People want everything. I'm they sure. They do. I'm sure, there's a facility out there that would love that. There, there it is. So where do you see H I N going? Like, what, what's the vision for them for the next, say, five years? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's so hard to say that because we are an establishment. We've been around since 1969. Yeah. And obviously, the landscape isn't the same as it was. not you know, in 1969, we were bringing people into Broadway theaters and into the Philharmonic um, on hospital beds, and we were wow. saying. You know, these are people who are institutionalized. Right. You know, you have to be comfortable around them. You know, we're going to make you comfortable around them. Right. And now, society, thankfully, is a lot um, more embracing of the populations that we serve. You know, in general, people aren't institutionalized as much. The right. facilities are a vast improvement of what they were. So I think that that kind of gives us more flexibility to offer more services and the quality that we provide. Right. Um, and I think that HAI can only grow and front and reach with the different populations. Right. You know, we've had the standard mental health population, frail elderly population. Uh, we do some work with visually impaired theater goers. And now, because New York City is growing in such a vast way, we'll be able to kind of find different populations that we'll be able to service, you know, in, in ways that we never thought, in art forms that we never Either. And you have a gallery there now, we too. We do have a gallery. So we um, it's actually our only program that is on site. We have right now, I believe it's 56 artists on our roster. That is just um, The majority of them suffer from a severe and persistent mental illness. Um, and we provide them a safe space to do their art. They also show their art. Yeah. And, and you, I mean, art is art. Art is art. It's like... You would never know Absolutely. by looking at this art that anybody's different than anybody else. Right, and and the best part about that is it kind of reintegrates these artists back into mainstream culture and society. Exactly. They're not isolated. And most importantly, they're not stigmatized by their mental illness. Not through and their art anyway. Absolutely not, and they're able to make a little bit of pocket change. Yeah. And, and you know, they're, they're able to lead productive lives and, and feel like they're part of a community, because they, they are. They are, exactly. That's just amazing. So, um, what what is what do you do exactly at HAI? I'm the director of marketing and outreach. Okay, and what does that mean? Titles are so confusing. So I was so I was hired on as the program manager for the arts access department. So basically, I um, helped out with every program that was a public program. So nothing in schools. The in facility uh, performances, which is why I was at your audition. Oh. The art gallery, our community performing art series. Uh, so I, I basically worked on all of those programs. Um, however, I, what I did with my job was a tremendous amount of outreach. You know, getting more artists, more people, more people for the public programs. Um, you know, figuring out what materials worked, what resources we could use. And I believe it was January and February of last year, there was kind of a turnover in the marketing department. And we kind of figured out how we could rework my current job to kind of serve those needs as well. So I do a tremendous amount of outreach, uh, but also, you know, grant writing, wow. dealing with the city contracts, raising money. Good for um, you. You know, it's, it is a, a big job. It's certainly one You're such I a little enjoy. thing. I, well, that's very Big nice job for a little girl. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah, you are. You're like a little kid. Where'd you grow up? In Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Really? Did you like when spring break happened, or did you hate it? You know, we really didn't notice didn't it. Didn't mix with the crew. No, no. And also, I feel like that was kind of after. Fort Lauderdale had its heyday when I was a little kid. Right. So by the time I was able to kind of be aware, you know, people were going to other places. Oh, like, so it's not Fort Lauderdale anymore? No, not really. Fort Lauderdale's mostly, you know, where Old people, people go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, <laughs> like the airport. Right. The right. hub for all those communities now. Absolutely. I mean, my parents, you know, uh, moved from Brooklyn to Fort ah. Lauderdale with everybody else in the late 70s. Right. Um, so our little community, all of my friends had parents who grew up in New York. So it was like New York like South. That, basically. Right. So, but you were you born down there? I was born down there. I didn't move up here until right after college, so 2007. Wow. So did you feel like a New Yorker always, though? Yeah, because I always had a community up here. I never, like, got off the bus with my suitcase. I was like, look at all the lights. Right. That was never my shit. And it's perfectly fine if anybody had that shit. But, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just never, I never felt like New York was a foreign and surreal place because I had been coming here for so long. Exactly. So today does happen to be Caramel Popcorn Day. No, I'm so day. excited. You know, this is my father's favorite thing. Really? Uh-huh. Wow. You want to bring him a piece and yeah. send it to Florida? I will. I'm going to... Leave here and call him on the phone and tell him. It is. It's National uh-huh. Caramel Popcorn Day. So now we need to get, since you're such a squeaky clean, wonderful person in society, uh-huh. do you have a skeleton in your closet? Is it my skeleton or yeah. AJI's skeleton? Because we have no skeletons. Oh, uh, yeah. No, not AJI. Okay. It's your um, skeleton. Well, you know, it is funny that you mentioned that because we do have a ghost in our apartments. Oh. Yeah. So we, a woman who lived two tenants before us. Um, actually passed away in our apartment, huh. and some really eerie stuff has been happening as of late, like water faucets turning on, Whoa! you know, wind gusts, uh, my fiancé found a flashlight that came out of nowhere, just turned on in the middle of our floor, lots of stuff. Did she, do you know how she died? Okay, so I don't know if this is a true story. But our neighbors have said that her daughter passed away a couple of weeks before. And so the story is that she passed away of a broken heart. Now, oh, my God. Now, I don't know if that's true. But, but it, it can happen. happen. It can happen. And we do still get her mail. So. Now, would you send... <laughs> oh, wow. Maybe that's why she's not. Maybe you know, yeah, that's 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 social not. security. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So what's her name? Well... Just her first name. Lady. Lady? Yeah. Uh-huh. What? Lady, it's Lady Aziza is her first. That's what the, the male Whoa. comes to. Uh-huh. Wow. So do yeah. you ever want to have a seance? I kind of do, but I'm also afraid of her appearing before me. What? Why? 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 Does she terrorize you? She doesn't terrorize me, but I'm afraid that my, my fiance works late yeah. nights, and so I go to sleep by myself, so I'm really afraid that like one night I'm going to wake up and she's just going to be standing there. Why don't you just call that guy? The ghost whisperer? Oh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> because now it'll make it even worse, and I'll have Sanford. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about him already. I thought Beetlejuice, no, that's right, he makes it worse. Yeah, he makes it worse. Don't, I just said but it's But I can have nice. Michael Keaton come to my party. That would be cool. Oh, maybe. Oh, right? that yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. So are you always looking for people through with HAI? Always on our oh, website. Yeah, what's the website? HAINYC.org. I can get you Beetlejuice. You could get me Beetlejuice. I can get you Beetlejuice. I know him personally. Absolutely. And if, you, if anybody, you know, we're always looking for, for new musicians or new visual artists. So if anybody's interested, absolutely. There's information on the website, how to audition, how to contact us. How cool is that? And um, it's a wonderful organization. I feel so lucky to be a part of it. We're lucky to have you. I'm lucky, too. So do uh, you want to push a button, Miss Heather? Anyone? Anyone. For lady. Oh, <laughs> she thinks. <laughs> and that's for you. <laughs> Give it up for Heather, HAI. Through the eyes of Ruth.